So feed mills exist because there is a need in aquaculture, especially as aquaculture expands and begins to try to produce more um, seafood protein, basically, uh, for the consuming public. There's a necessity to uh, have feeding as part of the operation. In, in most modern aquaculture, what's being done is to produce a feed, which is pr provided to a fish or a crustacean that then uses that feed to, uh, to grow uh, beneficially and the feeds are formulated to be nutritionally complete. The science is fairly well developed for most of the species that are currently farmed in aquaculture. There are some newer species where formulations are still being developed. Feed mill and in an aquaculture setting is probably not much different than what people are maybe familiar with when they buy food for their pets, so ex, you know, extruded feed for your dog. But So in a feed mill, typically what you see there is there's places for the feed manufacturer to hold ingredients that are necessary for the making of the feeds, and there's quite a variety of ingredients depending on what the intended species is that the feed will be given to. And then it goes into one of two processes which are normal in feed mills is either uh, steam pelleting equipment, which compresses those mixed ingredients down. That kind of feed is typically a sinking type of feed. So in aquaculture, some species feed more toward the bottom, some feed maybe midwater, and some feed on the surface. So the other kind of equipment that you would find in a feed mill is a, uh, what's called an extruder system. And extruders are similar in some respects to the pelleting, but they, they use pressure and heat and moisture to produce a feed that goes through a pressure process and then goes out where there's less pressure and air pockets form in the feed and that kind of a pellet would float. The, the roles that people play in a, a feed mill, there's, uh, there's some fairly technical people that need to know how to formulate the feed properly. There's software that helps them do that, but usually there's someone with a background in uh, animal nutrition or fish nutrition that knows what the needs of a particular species are. And uh, there's also someone who's responsible to source the ingredients. So there's quite a process to uh, obtaining those ingredients and bringing them in a timely fashion and fresh uh, into the feed mill. Uh, and then you have a lot of people that are involved in the manufacturing side of the feed. So someone has to operate the conveying systems or the mixing systems or the pellet manufacturing systems or the bagging equipment. So the best aquaculture practices program started out mainly around farm activities, so sustainable farming practices, but it was realized fairly soon that that farm product had to be processed, so then we had the need to do a processing plant standard, and then the other major parts of the inputs for a farm include the seed stock, so there's a hatchery standard, but the feed uh, part of, of our standards is probably one of the more important costs for aquaculture because the feed is a significant cost for any kind of a farm operation. And uh, there's a significant component of uh, feed safety to that because uh, the feed needs to be uh, safe for the animals that are going to be consuming it. Uh, the, the social component has become a really significant part of the feed mill standard as well. We have an environmental component. It's not, there's not as much of a component needed in a feed mill because there's not a effluent, you know, you're not using a lot of water in a feed mill. So there are some air quality and dust type factors which neighboring uh, communities may have concerns about. So that, that's part of responsible practices in a feed mill as well. So things that everyday consumers need to know about feed mills is what are the kinds of ingredients, for example, are, that are used in a feed mill. And uh, there, there is a growing focus on what's called the life cycle analysis. What were the energy inputs required to make those ingredients, grow them in the, in the farms and produce those ingredients, transport them to where the feed mill uh, is making the feed. All that sort of uh, energy and uh, carbon emissions sort of information is increasingly being incorporated into the uh, 
overall philosophy and manufacturing approach of feed mills so that uh, when uh, the consuming public buys a given seafood product, for example, a BAP certified four-star product, you can look at those and know that this was a product that was responsibly processed, was responsibly grown, and, and used responsibly produced hatch receipt stock and feed. Those are some of the basic things I think a consumer would want to know concerning feed mills.